Live from WTVO Rockford and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. Another shooting in Rockford this morning. Seven people have been shot in the city since Saturday. A local business owners left puzzled after a robbery. The thief didn't steal any trucks, just the keys to all 22 of them. And a bus tour makes a stop in Rockford, learning about careers in the industry during Manufacturing Month. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. Eric Wilson is off tonight. An early morning shooting in Rockford is the latest in a string of shootings across the city. Rockford police responded to Halstead Road near Conklin Elementary around 1 a.m. today for reports of a shooting victim. Officers say someone was driving the 32-year-old victim to the hospital when they crashed at Halstead and North Rockton. The victim was taken by ambulance to the hospital. He is expected to be okay. Police claim the man was uncooperative. On Sunday morning, police were called to Gladstone Avenue near Kilburn for shots fired. When officers arrived, they found a car and two homes hit by gunfire. A 20-year-old woman had been shot in the shoulder. She was treated at the scene. Four other people were shot yesterday. Police have not named any suspects. If you know anything about this weekend's crime spree, call Rockford Police or Crime Stoppers. In Freeport, police are investigating multiple shootings over the weekend. Officers were first called to East Pleasant Street near Third Ward Park around 8. An 18-year-old man told them another man wearing a black mask and hoodie shot at his vehicle from a dark-colored SUV. The victim drove off, then crashed into a tree. Then police say a house on South Carroll Avenue was shot up. The shooting is believed to be gang-related. Officers respond to the 600 block of North Walnut Street then in Freeport for reports of shots fired. During the investigation, police learned someone inside a car exchanged gunfire with another person standing outside an apartment building. 30-year-old Marquette Verner of Rockford was arrested. He's charged with aggravated unlawful use of a weapon without a FOID, unlawful possession of a weapon by a felon and other charges. It's unknown if this shooting's related to the one on Pleasant Street. Janesville police are looking for the person who stole ammunition, a taser, body armor, and other items from a squad car. The unlocked car was parked in the area of Birdsong Lane and La Padre Lane. It's believed the thief got into the car sometime between last Friday and this morning. Janesville police say the car belongs to a different unnamed law enforcement agency. If you have information, contact Janesville police. A Rockford area business owner is left looking for answers after he's targeted by a thief. This happened last Wednesday. No money was taken. Instead, the keys to 22 plow trucks were stolen. Our Nikel Delgado spent the day learning more about the burglary. And Nikel, what would you find out? That's right, Mimi. The owner of S&J Seal Coating and Snow Plow says he doesn't understand why he was targeted. And this making this prep for the winter season a little bit difficult. It still is like boggling my mind because I don't understand why someone would just come in and take keys unless he's got future plans to come in and, uh, you know, steal the trucks at a later date and get them a plow. The owner of S&J Seal Coating and Snow Plow spends most of October getting the snow plows ready for the upcoming winter. You got to check brake lines, transmission lines, fuel lines. You got to make sure everything's ready to go so when we do get snow and we get that phone call, we're ready to go out and, you know, service the community. But Steven Eisman tells me someone broke into his place, stealing 22 sets of plow keys, not the trucks, just the keys. Vanessa Breeze, who is an independent plow truck driver with SNJ, is concerned the thieves will return and take the trucks the next time. Trying to get all the trucks prepared for the winter, and now that this has happened, it's put us back to get all the trucks prepared and ready to go on the road because they don't have keys. Eisman says the extra work to fix everything pushed back their plans for at least a week. Nobody wants to deal with the stress and stuff. You should be able to come to work and do your job. And now we everybody had to miss a day or two of work over this. Eisman plans to upgrade his security camera system and get brighter lights to better protect his employees and business. He is also thinking about getting a guard dog. I just want to let everybody know don't leave any of that in your vehicles. I made the mistake and we left them in there and it was a costly it cost me, you know, so I'm just uh, I would keep all your stuff locked up. If you have any information on this burglary, call Rockford Police or leave a tip on the Tip 411 app. Mimi? 
All right, thanks, Nikel. Publishers of children's books say there's a growing demand for picture books depicting traumatic events. Experts explain that most major global events like shootings and natural disasters eventually make their way to children's literature. Breaking down these events can help kids understand and process their feelings. One school shooting survivor wrote a graphic novel about her experience in order to help kids going through similar trauma. It's a very unique opportunity to help um, all readers, but especially younger readers, to uh, connect, express those emotions. Experts say it can help kids cope if their schools and parents embrace this form of learning. The city of Rockford will receive two federal grants totaling over a million dollars. One supports a project encouraging men and boys to work as allies with women and girls. It aims to prevent domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault and other issues. Another grant will be used to create a community healing center at the Boys and Girls Club on Kilburn Avenue. Families and children exposed to violence can get support services to help with trauma recovery, youth development, and violence prevention and intervention. We here at Eyewitness News want to make sure survivors of domestic and sexual abuse know there is help out there. We have a list of resources on our website. Just click on the Stateline Strong tab. Illinois manufacturers celebrate Manufacturing Month by kicking off a statewide bus tour. Makers on the Move made a stop in Rockford this morning. They were at Ingersoll Machine Tools to highlight the company and its employees. In Illinois, manufacturing accounts for $600 billion of the state's economy. Organizers say the industry's biggest challenge is attracting the next generation of workers. So much has happened since the as we come through the pandemic and we look at all the, the challenges of supply chains, but the opportunities are so great. So we want to try to promote the opportunities in those careers for the next generation of person. On average, a manufacturing employee can make $80,000 a year. Legendary actress Angela Lansbury has died. She made her name as a crime novelist in the long-running TV series Murder, She Wrote. Lansbury also starred in Broadway musicals, including Gypsy. She won five Tony Awards for her Broadway performances and a Lifetime Achievement Award. Angela Lansbury was 96 years old. King Charles III will be crowned King of England alongside his wife Camilla, the Queen Consort, next year. The ceremony will take place on Saturday, May 6th at Westminster Abbey. It's expected the king will sign a proclamation formally declaring the date of the coronation at a meeting of the Privy Council later this year. It's been over a month since the newest COVID booster shot rolled out, but most people haven't gotten it. Hannah Brandt says that with colder months coming soon, federal leaders are making a push to change that. Less than 5% of eligible Americans have received the latest COVID booster shot, but the White House still hopes to see a surge of vaccinations this fall. We really want to rev up the urgency. This is going to be a critical piece of protection as we enter these winter months. White House COVID coordinator Dr. Ashish Jha says according to a new study, if most Americans do get boosted before winter, it could save as many as 90,000 lives. What happens in the weeks and months ahead will have a large impact on how the winter goes. Health experts blame some of the low booster rate on mixed messaging. People were kind of muddled in their messaging on who needs a booster, who benefits from a booster, what a booster is used for. That has led to a lack of enthusiasm. Dr. Amish Adaljo with Johns Hopkins says he thinks federal leaders need to target their push to seniors and other high-risk people. When you look who's dying, the 300 to 500 people who die every day, they are high-risk individuals. Almost all of them are elderly, and a lot of them have never been boosted. Dr. Jha argues that Congress's failure to approve more coronavirus funding limited their vaccine campaign. Congressional inaction has put the, the health and well-being of American people at risk. Still, the White House says they found a way to make sure this booster is free and accessible. Now they just have to convince more people to go get it. If you want to stay safe and healthy this fall and winter, the best thing you can do is get vaccinated. Dr. Jha recommends getting the booster shot by Halloween so that your body builds up full immunity before Thanksgiving gatherings. In Washington, I'm Hannah Brandt. Now, your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King.
Well, our day started off dry, but we have had some rain showers move in over the last couple of hours. Actually, as early as mid to late morning, kind of staying with some of us over much of the afternoon. Now we're starting to see a little more of a steady rainfall come down in some areas and a couple pockets of some heavier showers across central DeKalb County. Same thing here just south of Amboy. Rainfall has not amounted to much. In fact, a lot of us have remained under roughly about two tenths of an inch of rain. It's just been a steady light rain that has been coming down. Notice our rainfall totals a little higher along and south of that I-88 corridor where we have had some heavier rainfall come down, but just under two tenths of an inch here in Rockford. Same thing up in Monroe. Maybe another tenth of an inch of rainfall expected here, but we are going to dry things out once we get into the next couple of hours. So after about 8, 9 o'clock, things will actually turn a little more dry. Temperatures today made it into the upper 60s, low 70s. This was before noon. But our numbers have actually dropped once the rain has come in, despite that southerly wind. We are now down to 61 in Rockford, 62 in Freeport, and 61 our current temperature in Monroe. Winds have also been a little on the gustier side at times, gusting to about 25 miles per hour. And with that gusty wind, we are not going to see that temperature drop too much here through much of the night. We'll actually stay in the upper 50s. Uh, temperatures here will stay mild going through tomorrow morning. Winds will actually pick up later tonight and into tomorrow morning as well. We take a live look with our SkyTrack camera down in Rochelle. Kind of a gloomy look out there as the rain showers continue. Also noticing some fog kind of setting up as well. Visibility has dropped in some spots down to less than two miles in Rochelle and DeKalb. Visibility down to three here in Rockford, Freeport, and two mile visibility right now in Janesville. So fog will be a little bit of an issue here going through the night tonight. So as we kind of time things out, notice we'll start to dry up after we get through about eight, nine o'clock this evening. We'll hang on to some of that cloud cover as our wind does continue to come in from the south through the overnight. Cold front works in from the west later tonight. That'll help redevelop some showers and a couple of isolated thunderstorms through the morning tomorrow. Some of those could have some gusty winds, something we'll have to keep an eye on here through tomorrow morning, and even some hail as well. Not expecting a big threat for any severe weather, but note a couple of stronger thunderstorms may be possible. We'll keep those showers and isolated thunderstorms in the forecast through about noon tomorrow and then dry air comes in behind that cold front. We'll actually see some sunshine going into tomorrow afternoon. Temperatures tomorrow morning will be cold, well chilly. We're in the 50s for the morning, but by the afternoon we should be able to warm back up into the 60s with some sunshine. Winds pick up from the west. Second cold front comes in. That'll bring a passing shower about 8, 9 o'clock or so going into tomorrow evening. Wind then shifts around to the northwest. We bring back the cloud cover going into Thursday. Not going to rule out an isolated sprinkle or two. Might even have some kind of grapple mixed in with some of those sprinkles just because the colder air not going to be that far above the surface. So our freezing levels will be fairly low in the atmosphere. Now we've got kind of this roller coaster ride in temperatures here as we go throughout the next several days. Those numbers dropping through the 70s with highs back down into the 50s here by the time we get through the end of the week. And those 50s something that could actually stay with us going into next week as well. So 65 for tomorrow, 53 on Thursday. Got a small chance for a passing shower there, Mimi, late Friday into early Saturday. Right now, most of the weekend looks dry, but it does look to be on the cooler side. High temperatures stay in the 50s, and then we could even be talking low 50s, maybe even a couple of upper 40s once we get into next week. Now sports with sports director Scott Lever. The Ice Hogs put together a strong season last season with a very young team. Most of the guys are back for more and more season and ready to pick up where they left off. The last time we saw the Ice Hogs, they were in the Calder Cup playoffs. They swept a two-game series from the Texas Stars in the opening round. They were then swept out in the second round by the team that eventually won it all, a dominant Chicago Wolves team. Now it's time for the next chapter under second-year head coach Anders Sorensen, who went from interim head coach to head coach over the summer. The personnel we have is fast. We're, we're, we're going to be a skating team. We're going to be up the ice. We're going to be pressure. We want to create turnovers. And when we have the puck, we want to strike quick. That quick strike attack should begin with second-year player Lucas Reichel, the Blackhawks' first-round draft pick in 2020, and the Ice Hogs' leading scorer last year is back. So are Josiah Slavin, Evan Barrett, Michael Tepley, and Mike Hartman at forward. Promising young defender Isaac Phillips is also back. Most importantly, so is top goaltender Arvin Soderblom. 
on the ice, like Isaac Phillips looks strong, Slavin looks strong. I know Michael Tepley put some weight on. Veterans Dylan Secura and Adam Clendenning have been added to the mix to further strengthen the team. The goal is always at the AHL level is twofold, win games and develop guys for the NHL level. We want to make sure we're developing our guys the right way to be ready to play in NHL. We want to play fast. We want to create a winning culture down here so that when the guys do come up, they're used to winning. With the new coach up top, with Coach Richardson, does that change a lot, what you do here, the schemes, your style? Uh, you know what, I really like the, the stuff that Luke has implemented and it's stuff that we're going to do here as well and, and I think his uh, thought process and his uh, way he goes about things were really good and impressed in camp how he handled it. So are the Hogs shooting for a Calder Cup championship this season? Yes and no. It's a competitive league. I mean, if you look around our conference, I think a lot of teams have upgraded their personnel and their players, so it's a tough, tough division we're in and we're just kind of taking game in the segments, you know, game by game. And that first game will be this Saturday afternoon at Manitoba. The first WARN interactive radar brought to us by Rockford Auto Glass and more. We've got the rain showers as those continue to come down for us this evening. These will last for another couple hours before coming to an end after about 8, 9 o'clock tonight. We will continue with some fog as our temperatures will stay in the upper 50, so a mild, somewhat muggy, damp overnight. A few showers and a couple of thunderstorms to start off our Wednesday. No more 70s? All right, thanks, Candace. And thanks for watching. We'll see you at 6.